This is for the record. History is written by the victor. History is filled with liars. If he lives and we die, his truth becomes written and ours is lost. Shepard will be a hero, because all you need to change the world is one good lie and a river of blood. He's about to complete the greatest trick a liar ever played on history. His truth will be the truth, but only if he lives and we die. Ignore. Just refuse to publish any facts of African history that don't go along with our racial theories. We need to create a religious and a scientific doctrine so that uh, African slavery won't appear that bad after all. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. Start renaming people and places. Replace African names with Arabic and European names. This will disguise their true black identity. Let's change the criteria for defining race. For example, one drop of Negro blood in America makes you a Negro, no matter how light the skin. Yes, and when reporting ancient African history, reverse the standard. No matter how dark the skin, woolly the hair, or thick the lips, you don't have to be a Negro. When black contribution to civilization is too obvious, let's find a way to attribute it to outside white influences. When all the ancient historians contradict your theory, we'll just discredit them. You brooding about me getting the best of you, huh? Actually, I was thinking of that poor devil you fed to the dogs today, D'Artagnan. And I was wondering what Dumas would make of all this. Come again. Alexandre Dumas. He wrote The Three Musketeers. <laughs> yes, of course, Doctor. I figured you must be an admirer. You named your slave after his novel's lead character. Now, if Alexandre Dumas had been there today, I wonder what he would have made of it. You doubt he'd approve, huh? Yes, his approval would be a dubious proposition at best. <laughs> Soft-hearted Frenchie. Alexandre Dumas is black. All right. Shalom, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Barak Atha. Uh, this is Elder Taza Dakba. Uh, I'm doing this quick hit um, for the brother uh, Elder Ayatun's channel, um, GMS on Air. And what I'm going to talk about uh, very briefly <clears throat> is a, a, a situation among the Swedes. Now, the brother Elder Ayatun earlier in the week, he sent this article out to uh, all, all the brothers. And um, the article is named... Swedes seethe over documentary claiming their ancestors were dark-skinned. Um, Sputnik News, February 18th, 2019. This article came out. Now, there's a documentary that's about to hit the airwaves. I don't know exactly what day or when, but the documentary is going to show that the first Swedes were black people, and white people are in an uproar 
over this situation because we've been told uh, throughout our throughout our lives here in America that the Vikings, because the Norsemen, we've been told that the Norsemen were white people. You got white people that do uh, murals of Vikings being white men with these big axes and this long blonde hair and they have uh, this hat on that has the, the horns coming out the hat and all that and they like to paint themselves as some type of warrior type Vikings. Well those warriors or those Vikings, those Norsemen were the ones who uh, sailed and encountered the Native American Indians here in North America and established trade with them. Okay, they didn't come here and, and have war with the Native American Indians. They, they established trade with each other. The Vikings were also the ones who mapped out North, Central, South America, Canada. Okay, if you want to use a word called cartography, um, they were the ones who drew up what was known as, there's two sets of maps. There's something known as the famed Vinland map, and there's another set of maps known as the Piri Rees maps. Um, and Columbus, the devil, that he has had these maps in his possession. That's what's not told to us in history. Uh, he had access to Vatican archives, which they had those uh, maps, early maps that the Vikings uh, had drew up of uh, Canada, North, Central, and South America. Okay, so Columbus coming over here in 1492 knew exactly where he was coming to, and he knew the people that were over here in the Americas were Israelites because he had Hebrew interpreters with him uh, when he came over. Now that's another story. Now getting back to the Vikings, or getting back to the early Swedes, <clears throat> the, back to this article. It says, the first Swedes were dark-skinned hunters and collectors who moved to Scandinavia from the south at the end of the Ice Age. There they were quickly joined by another immigration wave, this time from the east, resulting in Stone Age Europe's most diverse population. A new documentary by the uh, Sweden's national SVT broadcaster has claimed the first Swedes, a new documentary by the SVT national broadcaster, has been met with critical reaction and backlash ahead of its airing. It hasn't even been aired yet. Now, I'm going to read here what a professor named Matthi Matthias Jacobson, a professor of genetics in Uppsala University and a researcher of the Atlas Project. This is what he says, which aims, what, what he, the research he does maps the human genome. His research is on mapping the human genome. Now, what he says is this. Uh, he maps the genome of Sweden's early population he stressed that unlike present-day Swedes, their ancestors had dark skin as a legacy of their African origin. Now, they always throw the word African in there, but the origin of these early Swedes was, guess what? Israelites. They weren't Africans. They were Israelites. They look, their look was quite similar to the people that at that time lived in today's Luxembourg, and Spain and Germany. Now he's going back into history. He's talking about the early Swedes look like the same people that were in Luxembourg and Spain and Germany back at that time. He's not talking about in this time, modern day. He's talking about back at that time. The early, those early Swedes looked like the same people that was in Luxembourg, Spain, and Germany. Their look would be quite unusual today. Blue eyes with dark skin. Okay? Now, that's what the professor said that the early Swedes would look like. I'm, I'm going to read the quote again. That would look like the people at that time that lived in Luxembourg, Spain, and Germany. Now, the people who lived in Luxembourg, Spain, and Germany back at those times, what did they look like? 
Now, some of you might say, oh, you, you, you black guys are crazy, especially those of you that's into the uh, so-called uh, whack conscious community, as we call it. Oh, you, oh you, now, now you're going to say the Vikings is black now. First, you're saying the Europeans is black because to you, anything from Europe is white, uh, which is a goddamn lie. But now I got some other irrefutable evidence. Uh, Thomas, uh, excuse me, Benjamin Franklin, who was an inventor, He's the man that's on the hundred dollar bill, right? We call him Franklin's, right? Now, let me pull that up. It's hard to try to, uh, to pull out information and, and just make it like five minutes. It's really hard to do that. But I'm just going to get to the point in this article. Um, the name of uh, Ben Franklin's article is called Observations Concerning the Increase of Mankind in 1751. Is when he wrote this essay. Okay, and it's called Observations Concerning the Increase of Mankind, 1751. Let me go to the bottom. Now, remember what we just read in that article about the early Swedes uh, being black and that the professor said that the people in Luxembourg, Spain, and Germany at that time looked the same as the Swedes that were in Sweden at that time, the early Swedes. Now, Benjamin Franklin says this. Uh... Uh, paragraph, the very last paragraph, he says, he says here, which leads me, as a matter of fact, let me, let me start up a little bit above. He says here, uh, and since detachments of English from Britain sent to America will have their places at home so soon supplied and increased so largely here, why should the Palatine Boers be suffered to swarm into our settlements and by herding together is, uh, establish their language and manners to the exclusion of ours? He's like, if, why should we let people from other countries come here and settle and then they're gonna establish their manners and their language instead of ours? Now he goes on to say, why should Pennsylvania founded by the English become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead? Notice he said to Germanize us, the English. He's talking about Germans at the time in 1751. Now watch what he goes on to say. He says here that um, Germanize us instead of our anglifying them because they try to claim that they're the Anglo-Saxons, but the original Anglo-Saxons, the word Anglo-Saxon means angelic sons of Isaac. The angelic sons of Isaac are the Israelites. Now, let me read on. It says, and will never adopt our language or customs any more then they can acquire our complexion. Benjamin Franklin said that these people would Germanize us like we're Americanized right now. We're American citizens, so we're Americanized. We speak the English language, we, we enter the football game, the basketball game, boxing, all right? All right, so Ben Franklin said, why should we let these aliens, in other words, foreigners from Germany come in here and Germanize us, they will not accept our language no more than they will be able to accept our skin color, which, Benjamin Franklin's a so-called white man. So the people in Germany were what? Black. Now let me read on. Now let me read on. He says here, because it's going to tie into the article I read about the early Swedes. Now, so uh, I, I, I got to blow this up a little bit. Let, let me try to turn this around so I can get it a little bit bigger, man, because it's getting a little darker out here. Here we go. It says, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionately very small. 
All Africa is black or tawny. Now the word tawny means like a yellowish brown, a reddish brown, which would be like uh, what you white people call copper tone. Because you white people that go to these salons, you get a tan and you look like more orangish brown than anything else. So that's a copper tone right there. And um, a light brown, a copper tone, or a yellowish brown is what the word tawny means. So it means that they're a person of color. It's not a so-called white person. I'm going to read again. All Africa is black or tawny. Asia, chiefly tawny. That's where you get, when we say high yellow, your high yellow ass, a light brown. Or the, tawn, the word tawny can mean like uh, you look at the coat of a lion, sandy brown, or how that, that lion has that, that nice light brown tan, uh, tinge or tan on his coat. He says, all Africa is black or tawny, Asia chiefly tawny, America exclusive of the newcomers. Who are the newcomers? You so-called white people. In other words, he's saying the Native Americans are what? Brown also. He didn't call them red people. That stigma of calling the Native Americans red people, that didn't exist uh, during the early colonial times. That came later because Ben Franklin, this is 1751 when he, was, uh, when he uh, wrote this essay. So now I'm going to read on. He said, Asia chiefly tawny, America exclusive of the newcomers. Who were the newcomers? You so-called white people. Holy so. America was holy so full of what? Brown people. People that were dark-skinned and people who were tawny. Right? And he says, and in Europe, the Spaniards, the Italians, the French, the Russians, and the Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion. Swarthy means they're black. So the early Swedes, like we read in that article about the, the Swedes were seething because the, science, the a documentary is about to come out saying that the early Swedes were black and had blue eyes. White people over there is getting pissed off. But Benjamin Franklin in 1751 made this statement in an essay that was published three years later in 1754 and distributed everywhere. Men's bones. I have the cunning to break their minds. And night by night, we will carry out my pledge of vengeance. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you. 